Welcome to Crawl Space. I'm Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? I'm fantastic. I honestly couldn't be better. I hope everyone out there is elevated in mood as I am. Tim, how's your mood? Is it elevated? I'm doing great, Lance. Thanks a lot for asking. We have a wonderful conversation here today. We speak with Aaron and Stacy, two new friends that we made at CrimeCon. They do a true crime podcast called I Said Goddamn. Highly recommend that you check out their podcast. It is a true crime podcast, like you said, but we also identified that it is a podcast about friendship almost before the true crime element. And we did meet them at CrimeCon, and it was a moment like none other. Walking past their table they had merchandise that was literally on racks they had keychains stickers bottle openers etc and they just stood out their energy was infectious please do yourself a favor if you want something different in your true crime listening catalog go to is gdpodcast.com I said goddamn. Yeah, make some new friends. It, it really does feel like you're hanging out with friends listening to their show and uh, and I think it's great. So uh, I hope you enjoy this conversation. And Lance, we're hitting the road this summer. Yes, we are. We are. We're touring with Patrick Hines of True Crime Obsessed and Pulitzer Prize winner Maggie Freeling. Lance, this August we're hitting Orlando, West Palm Beach, Atlanta, St. Paul, Minnesota, Houston, and Dallas. In the month of August, you can get your tickets at truecrimeobsessed.com. Really looking forward to this. It is a roast of the three of us by Patrick Hines. We talk about the Oxygen Limited series special, The Disappearance of Maura Murray. Plus, we feature our independent docuseries, Finding Maura Murray. And this isn't a heavy show at all. This is a light show. We essentially feature moments in both of those productions that make us look a little bit ridiculous. And we shine a very bright spotlight on that. All right, and we invite you to check out Crawl Space Premium as well. You can get that at crawlspace.supportingcast.fm. We do a weekly bonus show called The Crawl Space Crypt. We also bring you all of our normal episodes ad-free and sometimes a day early on Crawl Space Premium for the price of buying us a cup of coffee per month. We're not talking Pete's or Starbucks. We're basically talking Folgers. The best part of waking up is Crawl Space Premium in your cup, Lance. <laughs> I got a big hot cup of Crawl Space Premium going right now. Delicious. All right, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsors, and then it's on to the wildly entertaining conversation with Stacy and Aaron of the I Said Goddamn True Crime Comedy Podcast. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. Welcome to the podcast. It's Aaron and Stacy of I Said Goddamn. What's going whoop, whoop. on? Hi. Hi, gentlemen. How's it going? It's going great. I really don't even know where to begin with all this. First, I think we have to describe to the people who aren't watching this. Yeah. Where you are at. Oh. The two of you are together, and it's a very interesting location. Oh, there's a lot going on. Like, if you're easily overstimulated, this is not the place to be. (laughs) I'm starting to get a mild uh, hive breakout. Oh, then you're with your people. Welcome. <laughs> we are in our, what we call the egg, like murder shed, she shed, AKA my backyard, the studio, mm-hmm. the very important place that all of the magic happens. It's where we record. And basically all the things that you're being overstimulated by are everything that like our listeners have sent us and who makes us us. Oh, that's awesome. So your, your listeners have sent you all of these things and you've made it into this uh, scene. I love it. Exactly. I don't know if you can see, but in the middle here, there's a tiny diorama of what is happening here. Like somebody made a tiny life diorama and it lights up. Oh, just gotta light it up. I'm gonna light it up. Eventually. It's the whole shit. <laughs> oh, do you see it? Can you see it? Our cups wow. are in the way. Yeah. It's so meta. <laughs> it's so meta. It's so meta. Oh my gosh, guys, you can't even handle it. <laughs> so can you each introduce yourselves and what the show's about and what you bring to it? Erin's panicking. She's like, oh, no, I can't answer this question. Who am I? <laughs> Internal panic. I'm Erin, and uh, <laughs> this is what I bring to the show. <laughs> Dear Lord, I'll lead this parade. Thank God. Okay, so my name is Stacy, and Erin is my co-host here, and we run a little podcast called I Said Goddamn, a true crime comedy podcast. And that's exactly what we are. We're a true crime comedy podcast. We're two besties. We tell each other true crime stories that make you say, Goddamn. And, uh, you know, we respectfully joke a lot on the podcast. (laughs) Respectfully. (laughs) Respectfully. Uh, Like I said, we're besties and we met each other in high school. And one day we were just like, you know what we can do? 
make a podcast. And then it was incredibly hard and it's been a tough journey, but here we are. Yeah. We love it. We'll get into the podcast in just a minute, but since you brought up how the two of you met in high school, yes. I was just reading on your website, the About Us, oh God. I felt like I was going down a path and uh, like the wheels came off and I didn't know what I was yeah. reading. <laughs> I just want to read these couple of sentences. This is where the wheels started to come off. Seeing Aaron's ferocious speed, Stacy decided one fateful day to keep pace with Aaron's run and in trade provided running entertainment in the form of song and poetry. Their classmates stared in awe and wonder as the duo sped by singing Sunshine Day as made popular by the Brady Bunch and quoting the <laughs> ever scholarly Dr. Seuss poem, My hat is old, my teeth are gold. What is this? <laughs> That That's is exactly literally what it says. Yeah, that is exactly <laughs> precisely what happened. We were in high school PE class and yep. I ran track. So I very could athletic. Run. Very so athletic. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> you were a pole vaulter. I was a lot of things. And she could not run and wanted to get a good time on the mile. So hate. she was like, hate exercise. Yeah. She was like, if I just stick with Aaron, mm -hmm. I'll be able to get a good time. Yeah. And it was a great plan. I used you. me the entire <laughs> way. Just yelling, singing at me mostly. Yeah. yeah. I sang a lot and I still do sing a lot. That's true. And she was willing to accept it. And she learned the lyrics and sang with me. Mm -hmm. And so I, we would just entertain each other. I would keep pace and want to die the entire time. Mm -hmm. And every time I felt like giving up, I would just be like, I think I'll go for a walk outside now. The summer sun's calling my name. I hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I feel like okay. they're regretting this instantly. <laughs> no, this is great. So you guys are clearly uh, soulmates. Oh, Absolutely. twin flames. <laughs> so you met in high school. You've, you've lived your respective lives. What inspired you to make the podcast? Any reason to hang out. Any excuse to hang out and have her face in my face. And we both love true crime, obsessed with true crime. We used to watch documentaries together. Like I would text her and be like, okay, there's a documentary on HBO on 123, press go. And we would text and be like, hang on, I have to pee, like pause it. And we would just be like ferociously texting each other back and forth. And when podcasts started to become a thing, we started listening. Listening. She would recommend them all the time and I would barely listen. And then eventually one day I listened and I was like, girl, we can do this. <laughs> and she was like, I don't know. I was against it the whole time. So against it. I was like, this is a bad idea. No one wants to hear this. You reading that back to us, Lance? <laughs> I'm like horrified because it's something we wrote when we didn't even think anybody would listen <laughs> or visit the website. And I haven't looked at it since that day. And I am impressed with our writing skills because that is damn accurate. <laughs> I feel like I was there. <laughs> So this is just as I suspected. You started it because you couldn't not. You you needed to do it for yourselves. Tell me about the title. Oh, this is my favorite. Do you want to do you? Nope. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to take over the show here. Thank you. Um, okay. So there was a time in our life where, and it's just one life. We share the same life. There was a time <laughs> when we would always say, and this came from Aaron, you know, we'd do something and she'd be like, I said, God damn, you look good. Or I said, God damn, that tastes good. You know, she was just using it as like an exclamation and everything she did. Mm -hmm. And naturally, because I love and adore her, I copy everything she does. And so I adopted the saying and we lived our life frolicking in our goddamns. And then when we were trying to come up with a name for the podcast, we had a handful of ideas that I don't even remember. No, I don't either. And we stumbled across, I said, goddamn. And we both paused because we were like, oh, I really love it. <laughs> Nobody else is going to like this. It's this is going to get a lot of hate. <laughs> yeah, going to get a lot of hate. But you know what? We're like, who even listens? And it's a great warning because if you don't like the title, you're not going to like the content mm -hmm. because we are very... Um, Crass. Yeah, great word. Great word. I was going to say edgy, but that makes us sound too cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> or crass, but respectfully crass. <laughs> I'd say that's a good description. And I like the fact that you've identified that the title is sort of the, the gateway. I mean, yeah. if you can get past that gate, you understand what's on the other side. It's our safety blanket and our safety net. So anytime anybody says anything bad about us, we're like, oh, did you read the title? <laughs> Do you even know what you're getting into here? <laughs> You've gotten bad reviews just from the title. <laughs> Have you ever done an episode where it's just you reading your bad reviews? Oh, but we, we did should. a couple Patreons where we had a little thing on Patreon where we would read the like our favorite worst review. Yeah. Oh my God. Can I share my favorite worst review? Please. Oh my gosh. Okay. So allegedly, and I'm sorry if you're gonna have to cut any of this out because you guys are gonna hate us after this. I may have told a story about after you give birth, your anatomy is different. Very different. And part of that anatomy was our butthole. We were talking about our butthole and somebody <laughs> left a review and they said, I mean, it's good if you want to hear about some lady's dirty butthole. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a bad review? I <laughs> responded like and I star. said, <laughs> it's clean. Just for the record. <laughs> for the record, I have a clean butthole. <laughs> and then we posted it all over social media because we thought it was hysterical. And that person later came back and they were like, can you stop doing this? I actually listen to you guys all the time now. I gave you a chance and I really like the podcast. <laughs> They retracted their bad review. Did they leave yes! a good one? Yes. So I don't know if they the ever left a good one. No, they didn't leave a good one. But I mean, kind of in like our social media because they were like, I actually really like the podcast now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they should definitely go back and leave you a good one. I mean, they went to the effort of leaving you a bad one. <laughs> really, the good one, it's even quicker to do. If they remove it, then nobody's going to get the context. You know, like if they go back and listen to a past a- episode, they're going to be like, I never saw a dirty butthole review. They should definitely leave, oh, the, oh, oh, leave yeah. the yeah leave the bad one so the context is still there. I didn't even ask. No, I was just excited that they listen. Also, I hope they're listening to this too. When they're like, Jesus Christ, this thing will not leave me alone. <laughs> Careful what you put out on the internet, guys. It's a bell you cannot unring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, very cool. So where do you hail from? Where is this murder shed? San Diego. Mm-hmm. Smack dab in the middle of San Diego sunshine, living our best lives. And the two of you uh, grew up in San Diego. You guys are born and bred. Well, I she am. is. Yeah. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah. My dad was in the Navy, so I moved a lot. So I consider that I grew up in Virginia, although technically I had moved from there by the time I was like nine. But, you know, I feel like from zero to nine is a very impressionable age. <laughs> so I definitely feel like I grew up there. <laughs> I, would, I would agree that zero to nine is uh, you, you probably absorb some things. A few things, a thing or two. Yeah. I'm curious about the comedy aspect of your show because it's just infused with comedy. See, when Tim and I aren't recording and we're talking about whatever, we get into this like some would call it childish humor. We we yes. have a really childish kind of goofy sense of humor. But it just never occurred to us to take that to the true crime <laughs> podcasting uh, genre. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> How did you do that? How did you say to each other, we're going to keep our sense of humor with this? Because I think it works. But I think if Tim and I were to do it, I don't think it would work at all. Really? From my perspective, I know that there are so many true crime podcasts out there and there are serious ones that do it so well, Mm -hmm. I don't think Aaron and I could even touch the surface on that. I don't think we could hold our own in in that scenario, but we are so close and we do jive so well with each other and we feed off of each other so much that in our lives, just even with our friends, they're always like, oh, those girls, they're always so witty. It's always like Stacey and Aaron. Mm -hmm. So in doing this, our big goal was never to be like, oh, we're going to be so great and famous because we didn't even think anybody was going to listen. We were just like, let's an excuse to hang out. It's a great hobby. You know, we were both recently married, starting out our lives, literally pregnant twice yeah. during the Oh no, no, no. The first time we had just had a baby. Yeah. So and of course, cause we're besties. We got knocked up at the same time and everything, or I'm sorry, fell pregnant. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So we were looking for an escape, you know, something to do, some sort of hobby. And we figured if it if anybody's going to listen, it's got to be unique. And so we just kind of went with it. And it's all genuine. Like, this is how we talk. This is how we hang out. And that's kind of how we like to run the podcast, too, is like, you know, we curb it a little bit because we don't want to be too offensive, mm-hmm. obviously. But you're pretty much getting how it is like hanging out with us if you were to go to a barbecue or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I sense that. Being like on all the time is exhausting. So to do this, we kind of wanted to just be ourselves too. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, having to like perform, Mm -hmm. dance, monkey, dance, that's exhausting (laughs) and tiring. So we wanted something to kind of like, it's our escape also. And Mm -hmm. we love true crime too. So we know there's people out there that are like us. And sure, there's probably more people not like us, but those that (laughs) are, they enjoy it, you know, like, and it's their escape too. Yeah, your show is very much about friendship too, I have to say. (gasps) <gasps> we don't have our friendship bracelets. <gasps> Guys, do you have your friendship bracelets? Tim, you took yours off like the first day. Oh, <laughs> uh, not on. Yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I threw that away immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I did wear it the fir- the whole first day, though. It's after that first shower, though, where you're yeah. like, why is everything wet? Yeah. How long has the show been going? We've been doing this since 2018. So I don't even know how many years that is. It's a lot of years. Math is hard, guys. Not my strong suit. Like 10 years. At At least, least, you know, same jokes. Decade. (laughs) 
Um, so you went to CrimeCon in Las Vegas, and that's where we ended up meeting you. I mean, I can compare it to like a religious moment because we had been at our table for a while and we just, you know, show up at CrimeCon. We book a lot of the live shows, the panels. We don't really do anything at our table except for put our banner up and we have some merchandise on the table. And I was like, I'm going to go take a walk around. And I walked around and I mean, you guys had clothes racks. And <laughs> <laughs> thought I like walked into a different room. And I had to like do a double take and go back. And I was just absolutely astounded, astounded, absolutely astounded by. That's a good word. It's, it's like 3.30 on a Friday right now. So You're crushing <laughs> these it. these words are going to come out weird. At what point were you like, we're going to Crime Con? Uh-huh. That's question one. Was it your first Crime Con? And then when did you just commit to the merchandise and to show up and represent that brand? Oh, man. So Stacy signed us up for CrimeCon yes, or like put fact. us in the hat to get selected or not or whatever. And I was 100% against it. I don't know <laughs> if there's a theme that you're sensing here, but I've been against all of this and she has to drag <laughs> me along every time. But you I was like, were excited. She just gets nervous. I have like, that's why it works yeah. with us. Yeah. Actually, you crushed it at CrimeCon too. CrimeCon was like her first public appearance. Oh, I hated it. I you did it. so I good. Loved it. You did so good. But I'm terrified inside. It's not my scene. It's not my thing. And so I was like, we're not going to get selected anyway. It's fine. Yeah. So you let me do my thing. Yeah. I let her do her thing. And then we did get selected. And I was like, oh, to be oh. on pod row is what she's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I was terrified. Oh, I was terrified. Yeah. Because we're not well known enough for them to like reach out to us and be like, hey, guys, we'd love if you join us for pod row. <laughs> crawl space <laughs> and so uh we actually had to apply you know yeah. us noobs over here and we both didn't think we were gonna get in like we're too little not important enough but turns out they let us low lives in <laughs> and we had no idea what to expect and we were so excited and also a uh, little trade secret here aaron is a graphic designer like for her job. So like all of our merch and stuff, very easy for us to get a hold of <laughs> and mm -hmm. to procure. And we're committed to it. So we just invested our time and our money because we wanted to have a killer booth. We're new. Nobody knows who we, well, we're not new, but like in, in like crime con and stuff, nobody knows who we are. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make an impression and didn't realize that we would, but we did. We did. So proud of us. We obviously need a 10 foot banner, right? Obviously. <laughs> obviously, we need clothes racks. We need clothes racks. Obviously, so we, we need, need five different designs of stickers. <laughs> no, there was a lot going on at that booth. I, I agree. <laughs> there was a lot of neon, uh, a lot of colors. It was like, you couldn't just walk by it. I, I promise you that. No, we were literally harassing people too. <laughs> to be we, our friends. We might have been drinking Coronas there may constantly. Been. That's right. You definitely were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an eyewitness. Just for the listeners out there, they weren't drinking bottles of Corona. They were drinking like 24 ounce cans of Corona. I was tall can. I mean, you're in Vegas. What else are you going to do? You're not going anywhere. Yeah, not yeah. going anywhere. We had no one to impress, really, because nobody knew who we were. And mm -hmm. actually, that's our crowd, though. You know, you see two chicks drinking Coronas with a bunch of neon, and you're like, what's that about? <laughs> At 8 a.m. <laughs> At 8 a.m., you guys, this whole crime con thing, it was like a beautiful disaster. Mm -hmm. But we didn't ship anything. We literally brought suitcases and checked it onto the plane and like drug our suitcases through the hotel. <laughs> so crime con was a great time. Did you meet a lot of new listeners there? Yes, actually, we have. We made a lot of new listeners there. I mean, we can always use some more, you know, but a lot of people were like, we don't even know who you are. And we're like, that's the point of us being here. Mm -hmm. More importantly, we met awesome people like you guys and, you know, other podcasters and stuff. I didn't realize how tight knit and friendly everybody would be. I thought it would be like a really competitive environment, but everybody was so kind and so nice. Oh, really? So that was the perception that you went into it with that there would be some competition. This is the opposite opposite of that, right? Oh, absolutely. Everyone realizes that they're on the same team. Everyone realizes <sighs> that they're there for the same purpose. It's just different types of purposes. Exactly. The overall theme's the same. It's great to welcome you into this because you just bring a completely new and refreshing energy to it. That is so awesome. And we really want to thank you both so much because you even stopping by the booth and you're like, oh, your branding's on point. Just that one little comment made everything worthwhile. We're like, okay, we're crushing it. We're doing this. We can do this this, you know, because we have no idea what we're doing. Boosted my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've been so helpful and yeah. networking and so kind to us and inviting you us on your show and everything. Oh my God, we couldn't have even imagined. Well, it's clear you, you ladies are able to connect with your fans and it seems like your fans really love you 
um, based on the reviews. And I can see why. It's really funny. And again, it's about friendship, I feel like, before true crime. But criticism. Like, uh, I do see a negative review just strictly about the title. (laughs) See? When you first came out, did you get, like, religious people commenting about you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People are very offended. Even at CrimeCon, like people were offended. Yeah. But then some little old ladies would walk up and they'd be like, I can't wear this shirt, but I really want it. And I'll like wear it to bed. But like I would be crucified in my community. And I love my favorite cuss word is fuck. And they'd like whisper it and then they'd scurry away. And it was just the greatest. Yeah. Yes. You have these bad reviews and have they ever or not? I'm not saying that you're loaded with bad, bad reviews, but when yeah, you read thanks, them. Yeah, thanks Lance. Jeez. <laughs> I'm saying the ones that you read. Yeah. Does it motivate you to do the show even more? I mean, it must, right? Oh, boy. At first, it used to crush us. Oh, it broke my heart. We were like, we shouldn't do this anymore. This yeah. was a terrible idea. We have no idea what we're doing. I was like, oh, that really was offensive. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we're both very, like, severely insecure on the inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and people pleasers. Like, I want oh, yeah. I want people to be happy and to be, you know, comfortable and all that. And so and they're like, what you said there was really offensive. I'm like, oh, so You can't say that. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, What? What? Why not? Uh, Yeah. So at first they were pretty hard to take in. And then, like I said, we kind of just started making light of it because you can't please everybody. Mm-hmm. And if, if you're reading the title and you're offended, you're surely not going to like the content. And we honestly have so many more positive reviews than negative reviews that I think it's balanced out. I mean, it helps that we've been doing it for a decade. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now we feel a little more confident. <laughs> I feel like once you get past the eight year mark, you're really yeah. hitting your stride. Yeah, that's seven year itch. <laughs> no, a lot of emphatic five stars I've seen uh, in the reviews. I think it's great. I love um, it. Thank you. Yeah. When you first received the criticism, you felt like, why are we doing this? Uh, did you ever seriously consider stopping? Oh, I think Aaron's almost burned down the podcast like five times. <laughs> yeah so I was doing all of the editing and she was doing all of the social media stuff and there were times when for instance I dropped a hard drive that had you know every episode ever recorded including the one that was supposed to come out that day and I dropped it and it just turned back on yeah so we had like a panic moment. I think I shut down internally. We went to you went to Best Buy we went to Best Buy can you fix this (laughs) They cannot. They could not (laughs) fix that. That was the only time where I was like, well, I guess the universe is saying we should just give up now. But I was like, nope, nope, nope. We're sitting on a gold mine here, baby. We're going to just publish a Patreon episode. Mm -hmm. We never quit at the same time. Yeah. So we kept going. It's like, you know, like a relationship. You know how they say the secret to a long lasting relationship is to never fall out of love at the same time. Mm -hmm. We've never fallen (laughs) out of love with a podcast at the same time. (laughs) If I'm looking at this list of episodes, do you have 193 episodes? Mm -hmm. Uh, Oh, yeah. I was like, it's 94, 194, but we just recorded that one. So that'll be you know this weekend 193 (laughs) plus 37 patreons yeah yeah lots of content yeah that's separate completely from your public feed yeah those are whole new episodes we do one episode a month for patreon that you know is only available for our patrons and then we do different levels too so like they'll get the full experience like what you guys are getting with the video and everything and we'll do unedited so they can see all of the all the things that get cut all the bathroom breaks (laughs) all the really embarrassing moments where we're like i'm turning red aren't i Uh (laughs) like really shouldn't have said that huh commit (laughs) and we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors thanks to our sponsors and now we're back to the program how much editing is there Oh, boy. We record probably two hours and I'll cut it down to an hour. It's very good then because it feels like there's no editing at all. And I I mean that as a compliment. Oh, look at that, Erin. You are just killing it over here. (laughs) Boosting my life some more. Oh, great branding. Thank you. I feel like you're my cash cow and I'm just like, (laughs) like, edit this. Yeah. Print this. And I'm over here like, I don't want to do this. I don't think we should do this. She's actually being called captive. I'm going to blink twice. Don't do it. Hold her eyes. We know all the subtle hand signals. If you, need to, you need to get out. Did you teach yourself how to edit? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Googling and trial and error. And what do you use for software? Right now we're on Audition. We started with Audacity. Mm-hmm. I think it was just a free program. 
it was the easiest like cut and paste whatever simple cuts and all that and then now with audition we can do a lot more but I'm still I'm not a professional I didn't take the time to like actually learn how to use it. <laughs> you're not professionally trained you're yeah. not classically trained i'm not classically not trained classically, not trained. Trained. <laughs> classically <laughs> trained podcast editor <laughs> yeah but you're pretty good she like just like slaps the key i've sat on the airplane with her like going to vegas and she was editing and it just sounds like she's playing the piano like, there's like so many shortcut keys and she's like whack 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 <laughs> like, that was a funny part <laughs> She's a classically trained Beethoven of podcast editing. <laughs> exactly. It now, if you could just make it play a tune while you do it, that'd be great. <laughs> you should scream sing at her as she does it. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, she really uh, could. <laughs> we'll scream sing a like crawl space song. I love Lance it. Lance Tim, Lance and Tim. <laughs> Lance and Tim have pants and shins. <laughs> this isn't great. It's not going to be a good song. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> Sounds great so far. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys don't have shins, I'm really sorry. <laughs> My shins were amputated. It was a child. No! Yeah. yeah. Was it a nom? So, uh, wow. So tell us what what wow, kind indeed. of, uh, yeah, what kind of cases do you like to cover on your show? Oh, man. You go first. Uh, something, I guess, less known mm-hmm. or it's going to sound kind of morbid, but like eye-catching, it's kind of the more interesting cases not the ones that like suck you in and you're like what the ones that make you say god damn yeah yeah the ones that make you say god damn i think aaron picks more like serial killer episodes i do like you'll be like and then he chopped her in half and then he went home and went to bed and woke up the next morning and met another girl and then he chopped her in half <laughs> and i'm like oh shit that's two and then all of a sudden it's like 20 people and you're like okay you know not to be rude but i don't want to name them all off and i'm like jesus christ <laughs> And then I pick more of the like, you know, and then he like gouged out of her eyeballs mm-hmm. or something. And that because I want to see her squirm. Yeah, she's. And I can disassociate like none other. Mm-hmm. Unless <laughs> it's kids or animals. True. Of In course. which case, hard pass. Yeah, yeah, hard pass. So is the purpose of your recording to make each other squirm? It's my personal goal. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> torture you. Why are you friends with me? I don't know. <laughs> Seems not beneficial for me. Yeah, you don't benefit in any way so far. How do you pick yours? Is it just like, Aaron literally does, let me just answer for you. All right, You literally will just be like, Texas 2015 murder. I go with a lot of, uh, I do do that. Mm -hmm. But I do. (laughs) You said do do. (laughs) I also (laughs) go with like, you know, people who think that they're vampires. Ah, that's true. Or like werewolves, werewolves. or the occult or voodoo, stuff Mm -hmm. like that. You do those. I, I like those. Yeah. Where they're like, and then they, you know, summoned the beast using a talon from a raven. Guys, not to get too distracted, but I have the talon of a crow from Aaron. This is the shit you would get into. Pardon? What? what uh, this needs a backstory. Yeah, this needs can a little we context. hear a little more about this? <laughs> you want to give the context, Aaron? She found a crow. There, so Stacy's always wanted a raven's talon. Yeah. And being her Because best of friend, your stories. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. And because, you know, when she was like 13, she was a witch. So I was not. I just did seances. <laughs> not well. Like nothing ever came of them. But, you know, we all watched the craft. No one ever fell in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bind you, Nancy. <laughs> and then I got home one day and there was a perfectly preserved dead crow on my stairwell to my door some would say an omen it's obvious what i need to do from here <laughs> so some quick googling and i learned some taxidermy <laughs> i made her beautiful keychain with raven's claws or crow's talons but i will not put it on a keychain because one it's very sharp it's very sharp and two i'm pretty sure this might be illegal <laughs> I, yeah i was like why are you showing them <laughs> yeah and people need to know this is really cool yeah i, I, have, I have another one over here but her dog started to eat it so. yeah because it is a dead animal do you guys regret inviting us on <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> uh, so have you uh taken this uh newfound taxidermy talent and rolled that into a side hustle you know not yet but <laughs> i'm really looking for like every time i pass roadkill i'm like is it is it worth it <laughs> is it worth it to stop what are you in the market for right now like a coyote or something oh my god you like a full one graduating to a coyote yeah, yeah that that escalated. Home, right? fake it till you make it <laughs> okay, that's a good point 
<laughs> would you make it like a hat and like wear its body like a scarf? Uh, you know, like how people do that with like wolves heads on their head. I think you're thinking of Red Dead, but yeah, yeah, I do. Well, I, I, I'm always thinking of Red Dead, but <laughs> uh, I would probably go with more like this is its skull and you just oh. just have the skull. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that's different. Mm-hmm. But I also have kids and I don't really want them to know the extent of like how weird you are. Yeah. So I got to do it after they go to bed. It's a whole thing. My kids love it. They're like, can I touch it? <laughs> My kids did not see it at all. <laughs> Stay innocent. <laughs> Are you uh, training your kids to take over your podcast when you move on to something? Yes. We were talking about this because my younger son, since, you know, our st- studio is in the <laughs> back of my yard. My older son, I said younger, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, he comes in here all the time and he likes to like talking to the mics and hear his voice back. And so we were talking about letting her son and my son do their own little, <laughs> their own little podcast. And they we would just be like, gosh, damn. Yeah. I said, gosh, darn. <laughs> I said, gosh, darn. And then we were joking that they literally would just be like, her son would just say into the mic, poop, just a lot of poop jokes. And it's my really kid would just be jokes. laughing. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a market for that. We're just a four-year-old talking about poop. <laughs> All right. Tell us a little bit about your episodes. We always like to get into this with the um, other content creators that we talk with. Again, I went to your website and I clicked on Listen Now and 193 is called Snatch Guard. And I I laughed out loud. Okay. Do you want highlights on the actual crime itself or highlights on like why it got titled the way it is or like why we like the episode so much? Because they're different. Both. Yeah. 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 Just roll the dice. Roll the dice. Okay. So Aaron, go first with your favorite like actual crime related case actual crime related case or I can go first yeah, if you, you need to think first. I thought you already you we were just talking about this Mm-mm. okay okay well I have a couple of crime related cases but I think one that I like well, actually two that I really want to see solved because they're unsolved technically is Alyssa Turney who I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with but I think it was like in 2002 or something early 2000s she went missing after school one day and it's really heavily suspected that her stepfather Michael Turney did something to harm her and there's a lot of you know flags that point towards him but she's never been found she's still missing to this day and I think he recently was charged with her murder Mm -hmm. which I don't know the logistics of because they never found her body or anything so that is one that stands out on my mind and then another one is Daniel Robinson who we actually met David Robinson at Crime Con. And Daniel Robinson is the geologist from Buckeye, Arizona, who went missing on the job. And all that whole story itself has some crazy stuff behind it, too. So those two cases kind of stand out in my mind as something that really has captured my attention. And I am like desperate to. So I've stayed up late at night Googling, feeling like I can solve it and figure out where these kids are. Those are my two. Do you think of anything? I mean, as far as like insane cases or whatever that we've covered, I think Catherine Knight was my my go-to, you know, oh, yeah. the woman who murdered her husband and then skinned him and attempted to feed him to his children. Kind you of know, a, the usual. The usual like, <laughs> psychological which which episode is that? Which episode do you talk about that? Oh, man, it's kind of a more reason why. See, here's the problem. We title mm-hmm. these that are totally irrelevant to the mm-hmm. actual case. Like the Snatch titles, Guard. Like Snatch Guard. Totally not relevant to the case. Well, it kind of is because we're talking about like Scotch guarding your shirts, your clothing, so that you don't get blood on them. Mm-hmm. It was like a genius idea we had, which had turned right. into you could scotch guard your underwear. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. And the movie smart. Snatch was smart. was also Thanks. mentioned. So you combined It was those. mentioned. Yeah. What? Yeah. Snatch, the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. God, see, so meta, guys. We are so meta. <laughs> <laughs> it's so meta, and there's a lot of cross-pollination here. We just spoke with uh, David Robinson. Oh, <gasps> You did? Yeah, we had, we did a great like over an hour interview with him. Totally inspirational. He's not the nicest man in the world. I mean, considering what he's going through. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to listen to the episode. Outstanding human being. And uh, we're very good friends with Sarah Turney. <gasps> oh, well, there you go. I was going to say she was at CrimeCon too. I know. Yeah. I know. Would be more than happy to make the introduction because uh, she always loves meeting people, especially people that are passionate about her sister. Oh, absolutely. That would be amazing. You see, opening up the community. This is this is what happens. <laughs> We're just snuggling right under your guys' wing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small wing. <laughs> We're small. It's warm here. It's warm. It's nice. Cozy. I feel safe. <laughs> So the titling is is sort of a combination of something that happens in the episode, um, but it's definitely not the name of the case. No, usually not. What went into that decision? 
just listening back, something that kind of catches my attention, it's mine because I'm editing. Mm -hmm. And then I give her a couple little one-liners that were either funny or sound like, I don't know, a silly title. Mm -hmm. And then she'll choose the best one. And yeah, I think we, we, oh my God, there's like a garbage truck being dumped behind us. Sorry. Um, I think that we were going again with like not wanting to be like other podcasts because there's so many out there and sure it makes sense. Cause it'd be a whole hell of a lot easier to Google, you know, like the night stalker and easily find us. Instead we went with like snatch guard and people are gonna be like, I have no idea what this means, <laughs> but it was more in line of just staying with like, you know what you're getting into if you click this episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of a fun little Easter egg, you know, to people it who is. know what's going on, they see that and they're like, what the hell, where is this going to come in? And then when mm-hmm. you hear it, you're like, ah, I get it. <laughs> You're really corralling yourself some mega fans with this approach, I feel like. You know, we're very lucky. Our listeners are so amazing. Like you said, all this stuff came from listeners. They really are like our best friends and we truly mean it. I have people's numbers and I text them. We were recording last night and I forgot one of like one of our listeners, her best friend's name because we had met at CrimeCon. And so I texted her. I'm like, hey, what's your best friend's name again? Because we forgot. So we really are close and we'll like DM each other, email each other. We do a thing every year that we call Operation Moonblood. Again, you don't need to know the context of how we came up with the name, but it's where we take literally anything we have left over from Patreon because we take all the Patreon money and we put it back in the show. Anything we have left over at the end of the year, we give back to our listeners, like people who are in need, people who are going to have a crappy Christmas and need Mm -hmm. extra cash or whatever. And we'll just Venmo it to them. Like it's literally a labor of love. This is our hobby. We love everybody that reaches out to us and talks to us. We're genuine. This is who we are. It's, we're genuine people. We have no strings attached. We're not looking for anything. We're not trying to get you to, you know, give us a good review or anything. We just want to be friends. And, and also our, we like true crime. Our <laughs> listeners have created such an like tight knit community where they even get into the spirit of it and not like, oh, yeah. they'll send each other Christmas gifts. Yeah. Or if someone else in the group is in need, they'll send each other money yeah things like or like gofundmes and stuff yeah and if somebody goes missing for a while on some social media you always see somebody like hey we haven't heard from so-and-so in a while like is everything okay and then so-and-so will pop in and be like sorry just having a hard time but everything's good and we also share our fur baby pictures like it's literally a family we -hmm. actually call the listeners the goddamn fam (laughs) (laughs) that's my goddamn fam you uh, also just mentioned your fur babies can you tell us a little bit about carl Carl's my main man. He's uh, he's my dog. He's half German Shepherd, half Doberman, and he is a hundred and something pounds of just large, pure love, pure love. I love him so much. He's so intimidating. He is very intimidating, but he's dopey and dumb as hell. He and- is so dumb. <laughs> I love him. And uh, he's he's my first fur baby. He's my love. He's my boy. He's one of those like y- huge dogs that thinks he's little. So he'll mm-hmm. like try to crawl on your lap or like he steps on your foot and you will literally have a foot injury. Like you're going to get a bruise. Mm-hmm. You're going to maybe a broken bone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's heavy, <laughs> but he doesn't realize he has he's no idea. Dumb. No idea. Oh, but he's so sweet. <laughs> I actually dog sat for her recently and we always joke because her, her legs are covered in bruises and she's like, oh, I'm anemic. And after I dog sat, I was covered in bruise from Carl's like tail because it's like freaking it's like a wrecking ball, that yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you're anemic. I think you just have a very large dog. I'm curious about the jobs that you do outside of the podcast. Yes. And we don't have to we don't have to really get into the jobs that you do outside of the podcast, but you said that the podcast was a hobby. Is this something that you're working towards it being less of a hobby and more of a transition into a, like as a, in a full time capacity? And then you sort of do your other jobs a little less and less, maybe ease into this as a full time gig. That is our life goal, mm-hmm. our dream, That's the, the dream. pie in the sky, the cake in the field of dandelions, you know, like, of course, we really want that to happen. I think when we started, we didn't even think we'd get this far. Mm -hmm. And now it feels like more and more it could become a possibility. And we're like, so excited. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yes, yes, it is ultimately an end goal. I think it'd be silly to say like, you know, no, we just want to keep it a hobby forever. And of course, we don't want it to take off so much that it's no longer our creative baby. So it's kind of like this fine balance that we're, you know, toggling here. I would love if I could just spend all week researching because the I think the hardest part for me is like, I'll find a case that I'm obsessed with and I'll research it for like two or three days. And then I don't have any more time. Like we have to record the episode mm-hmm. and I only have, you know, I'm a mom and a full-time job. So I only have like a little hour a night to research. 
huge. So it'd be amazing to have all the free time to be able to like dig into the nitty gritty. Or to like read the books that are actually written by whatever people attorneys who, yeah. and things, people involved in the case. Yeah. So definitely that's our goal. Mm-hmm. That'd be amazing. That's great. And I think that was like the first time that Aaron was actually like, yes. And you were like, yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Both Stacy and Aaron were like on the same page and there wasn't like a pulling of, of Aaron and trying to convince her. You seemed very convinced. <laughs> I am. Does like I it. am very convinced. As much as I'm hesitant to be in front of people and do all of the things in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I do love it. I love the whole podcast. I love the listeners. I love being here. I love researching. I love talking to Stacy and just, I don't know, vibing and being, being us. It makes us feel, you know, life can get so crazy. We always say like, if we have to skip, so like, for example, she went out of town like last week. So it was like two weeks before we saw each other. So if we skip a week without hanging out or doing the show or anything, it feels like you're not yourself anymore. And then we hang out again and it's like, oh, okay. I feel like me again. Like, thank you. (laughs) That's called codependency. Yeah, it's really not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's it sounds super sweet, and then when you actually <laughs> label it with a definition, it yeah, it, uh, it, it is codependency. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. It's, run with it. Just work. It's fine. You, it's like everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Exactly. <laughs> with this codependency, with this um this great dynamic that the two of you have, are there any plans for a live show anytime? Set up the little uh, murder shack on stage murder shack oh wouldn't that be so cool it would be really cool Erin's sweating her palms are sweaty and she's got vomit on her sweater already yeah (laughs) mom's spaghetti I don't feel good (laughs) just the idea of a live show makes me nauseous oh and I'm just gonna pump her full of corona and throw her on the stage and just throw jokes Mm -hmm. at her because she knocks them out of the park every time I I have medication (laughs) it'll be fine Would you be able to replicate the set behind you? Oh, yeah. Shoot. This stuff is just all like narrowly tacked to the wall. You <laughs> bump this thing the wrong way, they'll fall off. Yeah, we could take this. We could make a giant banner of it. Yeah, she could print a giant banner. She could take a picture and print a giant banner of it. It'd be like you were there. Well, I think that sounds like a great time. I would I would attend if it was in my area. Yeah, I think you, you have something special going, uh, Stacey and Aaron. Thanks a lot for joining us here. Oh, thank you guys so much for having us and dealing with us. <laughs> and let everyone know where they can get your podcast and where they can buy your merchandise. Well, you can go to our website, isgdpodcast.com, and there you can find a link to our merch. And also, we're on all of the major platforms that you podcast on. So, you know, we're out there. You just have to type in, I said, goddamn. So as long as you're okay with typing those words, you'll find us. <laughs> oh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And our handle is at ISGD Podcast. Thank you, guys. Thanks you guys have been awesome. Us. And we've got besties for life. You can never leave us. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> There's no escape. Lance and Tim. Lance and Tim. <laughs> Lance and Tim have... Pants and shins. <laughs> this isn't great. It's not going to be a good song. <laughs> <laughs>